What if you want to solve 10 times the square root of 125? How would you do that? Well, the 10 is going to be multiplied times whatever this radical turns out to be. So let's focus our attention on that. What times what gives you 125? Well, it turns out that 25 times 5, if you think about it, is 125. I can't do anything with this 5 because it's prime. Um, so the 25 can, of course, be written as 5 times 5. Now, I've got everything down the tree as far as he goes. I can circle this one pair, but this 5, he has no, he has no partner. So we can write the answer now. The 10 is always going to be out there times whatever the result of that radical is, which is the single 5, or the pair of 5s, can be pulled out as a 5. But this 5, he does not have a pair, so you need to keep him under the radical. 10 times 5 is 50, and the square root of 5 stays along for the ride. That's the final answer, 50 times the square root of 5. All right, we'll go through these a little bit faster than we have in the past, just because, you know, we're, we're, we're cranking through and we're, we're making some progress with your understanding. So 5 times the square root of 600. Same thing, 5 times whatever the square root of 600 turns out to be, so we write a tree. 600, the easiest thing to do is just take 6 and multiply by 100. And then you're just going to go down the tree. 6 can be written as 2 times 3. And 100 um, can be written as 10 times 10. Okay? Um, now there's a, there's a couple of different ways to proceed. And you know what? I think I want to do this problem two times because I want to show you, again, just a variety of ways to do it. So let's go ahead and first of all, just stop here, because the first thing I notice is that I have a pair of tens. So I can, I can stop. Anytime I see a pair, I can stop, of course, and I can say, okay, well, I see him. I can pull that out. But when I do that, I have a two under the radical and a three under the radical. So I want to show you, again, two different ways to do this problem. The five is still there. So the five, he has to be out here times, what can I pull out? I can pull out this 10, right? I can pull out that 10. And so the 10 will come out. Now underneath the radical has to be everything else that's left over that doesn't have a pair, which is the 2 times the 3. Don't forget everything's multiplied together here. So underneath the radical, you really have 2 times 3 because that's what's left over. He, neither one of those guys have pairs. So at the end of the day, you're going to have 50 times the square root of 6. That's the final answer. That's the final answer, 50 times the square root of 6. Now, I want to do it one more time just to kind of show you, because I do think there's value sometimes in showing you multiple ways to do things. Because as you do problems, even, even me, I do them differently sometimes each time. So let's go and do this again. Um, 6 times 100 was the first thing that I thought of, so let's stick with that. The 2 times 3, we'll stick with that. The 100, let's just stick with the 10 times 10. So everything really is the same up to this point. But let's just say for some reason I don't really realize that the 10 times 10 is a pair. It doesn't jump out at me. So let's continue on and say 10 can be written as 2 times 5, and this 10 can be written as 2 times 5. So now everything is down at the bottom of the tree prime, because 2 is prime, 3 is prime, 2 is prime, 5 is prime. These are obviously the same number, so they're prime. So now I can just look for pairs. So pairs in the bottom of the tree. This is a pair, right? And then this 5 and this 5 is a pair. All right. So what I have left up, left over here, is I have the five that can be obviously just sitting there times the two that comes from there, single two, times the other pair which has the five that comes from here. And then I look at the bottom of the tree again. I have the three and I have the two. Even though they're separated, this one's way over here and this one's way over here. Everything at the bottom of the tree is effectively multiplied by each other. That's what this is, is a multiplication tree. So underneath the radical, you're going to have again the two times the three. So at the outside here, you're going to have five times two is ten. Ten times five is fifty times the square root of six. Maybe it wasn't really worth the time to show you those things, but sometimes when you get to these trees, some students are confused, like, well, should I stop here because I found a pair, or should I keep going to the bottom of the tree? The truth is, it doesn't matter. As long as you do it you know, correctly and you're not making you know, multiplication errors, you're going to get the same answer either way, um, as long as you're following the technique I'm showing you here. All right, so let's go on to the next problem, which is a different problem type, actually. Remember, we talked about fractions, 28 over 63. Let's say we want to take... The, the square root of that fraction. So remember, we talked about that in the last couple of sections, a few sections ago. You break it into the numerator, which is the square root of 28, 
divided by the denominator, which is the square root of 63. Now the difference between this kind of problem and the problems that we did before is that each one of these square roots are just a little more complicated to deal with. They're not hard, they're just a little more complicated. So let's go and work on the square root of 28 over here. 28 can be written as 7 times 4, and 4 can be written as 2 times 2. Now I've got everything in the bottom of the tree as a prime number, so I circle the 2, that's a pair. So what I have is the single 2 comes out, the 7 that I have here, he's orphaned, so he has to stay under the radical. So I get 2 times the square root of 7 um, as, as the answer to that square root of 28. So let me go over here and then work on the denominator, which is the square root of 63. Alright, what times what gives you 63? Well, 9 times 7 gives you 63. 9 can be written as 3 times 3, and I'm basically done because the 3's are prime and the 7 is prime. So I start looking for pairs, and I see that I have a, a pair of 3's. So I can pull that out of the radical, 3, and the square root of 7 remains underneath because it doesn't have a pair. So basically, what all you did was you broke this fraction up into the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator, and now that we have these answers, the square root of 28 is 2 times the square root of 7. 2 times the square root of 7, and the bottom is the square root of 63, which we found to be 3 times the square root of 7. Now, you could circle that, but think about it for a second. What do you have here? Um, don't forget that the square root of 7, it looks ugly because it has a radical, but it's just a number. If you punch it in your calculator, it's going to be a bunch of decimals. It's going to be a long decimal, but it's a number. And on the bottom, you also have the exact same number. Yes, they're both radicals, but they're exactly the same. Square root of 7 on the top, square root of 7 on the bottom, you can divide those away because they divide away and give you 1. So basically, these are going to completely cancel away, dividing away to give you 1. So they're going to disappear, and at the end of the day, the answer is 2 thirds. That's the final answer. And that's why I'm doing these kinds of problems, to show you that when you get radicals on the top and on the bottom, you can cancel them. Just like if you had x on the top, and x on the bottom, you can cancel that. Or if you had x to the fourth on the top and x to the fourth on the bottom, you could cancel the x to the fourth because they're on the numerator and the denominator. And whatever's left over is basically what you have as the answer. All right, let's go and do another one. It'll be very similar. Um, the fraction is 99 divided by 44, and we're going to take the square root of that fraction. Same thing, break it into the numerator and the denominator. Square root of 99 square root of 44. And now we just have to work on those separately. So we'll go over here and we'll say the square root of 99, what is that equal to? Well, the thing that pops in my head is 9 times 11 is 99. The 9 can be written as 3 times 3, and now we have prime numbers because 11 is prime. You can't multiply anything to give you 11 other than 1 times 11. The threes are prime, so now I just look for pairs, and I see a pair of threes. So I can pull that three, the single three, out, and the square root of 11 remains under because it doesn't have a partner. And then I go and do the bottom, which is the square root of 44, and I do exactly the same thing. It's going to be 4 times 11, and the 4 can be written as 2 times 2. Everything's prime now, so I have this, the pair of twos that I can pull out a single 2. The square root of 11 stays inside. So now that I have all of that stuff, I can write the final answer as square root of 99. We just found that to be 3 times the square root of 11. And the square root of 44, which we just found to be 2 times the square root of 11. Now what do you think happens? You have a square root of 11 on the top, and you have a square root of 11 on the bottom. They go away, and the answer you get is 3 halves. That's the final answer. So don't be afraid to cancel... Um, to cancel radicals. They're perfectly fine to cancel, just like anything else. If you have two on the bottom, two on the, two on the top, two on the bottom of a fraction, you're going to get a cancellation there. Final problem, 7 over 175. Let's take the square root of that. So we'll do the same thing. It'll be the square root of 7 on the top and the square root of 175 on the bottom. So we need to, to, to handle this. Um, Let's take a look at the square root of 7 first. Square root of 7, well, what do you do? You really can't do anything because 1 times 7 is all you can do. It's already prime. So really, there's no way you can make that any simpler. You can't you pull anything out or anything. So when you already have something that simple, you just have to leave it as a square root of 7 because you can't make it any simpler than that. You can see that at the factor tree here because there's, there's no pairs anywhere. All right, so then you turn your attention to uh, the denominator, which is the square root of 175. 
try to take the square root of that. Now you can definitely write a factor tree for this. Turns out that 7 times 25 is, uh, makes 175, and 5 times 5 uh, makes 25. And these are all prime numbers, the 7 and the 5s. They're all prime, so I can just go ahead and circle that and say, well, I have a pair of 5s, so I can pull out a single 5. The 7 is orphan, so he has to stay at the end of the radical. And then I go back and I plug those values into what I have. Uh, on the top, with square root of 7, there was no way I could really simplify that anymore. The square root of 175, we just found that as 5 times the square root of 7. So we cancel the square root of 7 and square root of 7. And you've got to be careful here. When you have a cancellation, they don't just disappear into thin air. What's happening is the square root of 7 is a number. You divide it by the square root of 7, which is a number, which is exactly the same number. And so you get 1. So it doesn't literally vanish. You have a 1 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. And that's the final answer. So the answer is going to be 1 fifth. That's it. This process... There's really no reason to continue solving tons of additional problems because once you get the hang of it and you understand what we're doing, it all makes sense. Basically, you're going to be, uh, uh, if you have something out in front, you just handle the radical and then you pull out what you need to pull out and things are multiplied in front and then you get the final answer. And then, of course, we increase the problem complexity just a touch because now we have fractions. You just handle each one separately and if you have a cancellation, then great, you have a cancellation. And sometimes you won't have a cancellation. That's okay too. So you can leave it, leave it alone if there's nothing to cancel. So make sure you understand this. Um, so far we have done square roots with numbers. Now in the next section we're going to start to involve variables here. So follow me there. Make sure you understand all of this. Follow me there and we'll start handling variables with square roots in algebra. Learn anything at mathandscience.com